So thank you so much for joining this webinar where we will be talking about essential business and marketing tools to start a right healing company. And first of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Lisa. I've been a lead digital marketer at Ondi. I've been working with Ondi for five years. And for those who don't know, Ondi is a white label right healing solution provider uh, for everyone who wants to start their right healing or taxi business. Uh, but apart from Ondi, I spent quite some years in marketing and digital marketing for different IT companies. Uh, in total, I have more than 12 years of experience. And yeah, as I mentioned, today we will be talking about all the different tools that you might need to start your right healing business. We will not go into different right healing solutions today. We will talk about some other tools. Uh, before we start with our webinar, I want to mention that you are free to ask questions in the chat or in the Q&A section. I'm going to answer all these questions after the main part. And uh, yeah, so today we're going to talk about all the different tools. Um, I'm going to quickly introduce what platforms like Ondi can cover for your business. Then we will talk about tools for creating websites, tools for doing research, tools for analytics, some marketing tools, design, video tools, and other tools that might also be useful for your business. I did my best to remember all the different tools that you might need during your business journey, but of course, there are some other platforms and services, for example, something for taxes, something for accounting, but it's very difficult to mention all of it because those specific, like for example, taxes tools, it's difficult to mention all of them because obviously each country has their own taxation system and I cannot just mention all of them, all of that we have in the world. So it's better if you find it yourself. But if I forgot to mention something, please feel free to ask the question about some specific tools that you don't hear about today. But let's start with something that Ondi platform and other right healing platforms can cover for you. It's basically Ondi and platforms like Ondi is a technical solution to operate your right healing business. And what we provide is a set of different apps, a set of tools for you to operate your right healing business. It includes driver app, customer app, operator app for managing all the different incoming orders with operators. My hub for business management, web app for partnering with other businesses. So that's basically help you to operate your company. But of course, when you start your business, it's not only about having these, these tools, these apps. You need more. And like Ondi can, uh, of course, provide some analytics for you. Like you can find it in my hub. Uh, we also have Google Analytics integrated. We also have some meta, which means Facebook and Instagram events uh, in our apps and Apps Flyer, uh, which is a paid tool. Uh, it is free for, I don't know, the first, first couple of months, the first month maybe, but later you would need to pay. It provides more benefits than Google Analytics and I will get back to it later. But this is something that Ondi can help you with. So basically, you can operate your business with platforms like Ondi and you can get some information about um, analytics of your business. That's what we can help with. But when it comes to other tools, what else do you need? And of course, you need to create a website. Um, this is you don't need to think about a fancy website for your right healing business. I believe that it's much more important to have a good mobile application, good mobile applications for your drivers and for your customers. And that would be the main way for you to get your clients. You don't want to, um, when you're doing your promotion, for example, your paid marketing campaign, you don't want your customers to go to your website. You'd rather ask them to use your mobile app, but still the website is essential. You need a website. It just doesn't need to be fancy. So when it comes to tools, my personal preference here uh, is going to be Wix. 
which is a very affordable service. It's a very easy to start. It's very easy to use even for beginners. Even if you have never created a website in your life, just go with Wix. With Wix. You will not pay a lot of money for it and you will get everything you need to have a very basic website. You can just get a very basic template and yeah, start from that. I think it's just the perfect option for me personally. Uh, if I need something very simple, I'd go with Wix. The downside is, of course, it's not that flexible. So if you want to, you know, something amazing for your website, of course, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to work with Wix. But if you're you're just starting and if you don't have a lot of people in your team, yeah, it's a good option. Um, then, of course, I want to mention WordPress. And I do believe that pretty much everyone heard about WordPress. It's a content management system, which is, a, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's open source, but it's very cheap. It's very affordable. It has so many different plugins and themes and templates to use to create your website. It has a large community of users that are ready to help you. If you have any issues, you can just talk to them and ask them and they will help you. It's highly customizable. So you can, of course, go with the template that WordPress provides you to create your website and just, you know, add your text about your services and have this page. But you can, of course, add something more and add some, some other, like, as I said, plugins or some other parts for your page. So you can just play with WordPress as much as you want. And it's also search engine optimization friendly. So it's something that might be beneficial for your business. The downsides, it's not that easy to manage. I will be honest, um, despite the fact that, yes, yeah, sometimes I know that it might be recommended to beginners. I don't really think that it's such an easy system to use. Um, and also you might have issues with security and you would need to pay extra for a domain and hosting of your website. Um, then when it comes to other tools for creating websites, it could be Webflow. It does provide more opportunities for design and it is an easy to learn option, but still it's easy to learn, but it's not for beginners. So if you have never had the experience of creating a website, I would probably not use Webflow. I would go with Wix um, and it might be quite costly as well. So this is just something for you to keep in mind. Also, apart from the tools that I mentioned, there are many tools right now that provide um, creating websites using AI. And it's quite fast. It's quite customizable, um, for example, durable you can start with this one. So usually you can just describe the website that you need and it just comes up with the, the page that might suit your business with some text, with images. So it's, it's an easy to create process. I do believe that you might get something pretty unique with it. Uh, but yeah, of course it has limited features. It might have some uh, limitations in terms of design, etc. And I don't know, like, honestly, I'm like a bit, um, I can say that I'm a huge fan of creating something from scratch with AI, because you would need to spend time optimizing it still. Uh, then we also have this tool, which is kind of Doric AI. Also, it's AI based, it's fast and it's easy to use, but limited customization, limited templates, but you can give it a go. Basically what you can do is just check all these different websites and see what's gonna suit your um, work, your business best. Also, when it comes to tools for creating websites, I want to mention GoDaddy. Uh, I, whenever I need to buy a new domain, that's the website I'm going to. All my domains are from GoDaddy. It's basically a tool for buying domains. So what is a domain? I don't know, like, for example, you want your website and it should be like 
the best taxi app.com and that's where uh, GoDaddy is the website where you can get this domain where you can buy this domain and uh, it also offers hosting for your website so basically it provides you with um, uh, some space for to have your website it does provide emails uh, so if you don't have an email and yeah, you can just also get it with GoDaddy and it does have its own content management system. Uh, and by content management system, I mean uh, all these tools that I mentioned before. So you can also create your website on GoDaddy. Uh, it provides with some templates, I believe, as far as I remember. And it's also very simple. So maybe it would be a nice option to go with a GoDaddy website, like fully. So you need a website, you go to GoDaddy, you get a domain, you get a hosting, and you just create the website right there with GoDaddy and forget about it for a while. Because again, I don't think you need something fancy. N next, next section is tools for research. And by research, I mean research on your competitors, on the market situation, just everything that you need to know about what's going on, what's happening outside of your organization also connected to your organization, connected to your business. And here I want to start with tools like SEMrush and uh, similar web, which can help you with search engine optimization analysis. Basically, they can show you how well you are doing, um, your website is doing in um, Google, in being in other uh, search engines, how well search engines accept your website, how good um how your potential audience how easily can they find your website on the internet that's something these tools can help you with it can help you with also competitive research uh, meaning that it can help you to analyze the traffic on competitors websites their promotion strategies for example whether they're using any paid channels which keywords they use to promote themselves to promote their websites and by this, you can understand what exactly your competitors are doing in terms of promotion and kind of, I wouldn't say steal, okay, you're not stealing their strategies, but you can just see what they do and do something similar for your business as well. And same thing goes with similar web, um, again, search engine optimization analysis, competitive research. Uh, what competitors are doing in terms of their digital promotion strategies and discover some keywords that you can use on your website to promote your website so that people can easily find it. Then, personally, I do like to use Moz, uh, this tool, which also helps with search engine optimization analysis. But also, I like this tool because they do have a free tool for keywords so you can find free keywords that you can use for your website that you can include um, in your tags on your website so that people can find your services in the internet when they will be googling for i don't know right hailing in uh, ghana they will find your website more easily uh, then also, Google Trends, uh, this tool will help you to understand what are the trendy topics are there in your country, in your area right now. For example, there might be something, I don't know, like a local celebration or some big news connected to whatever I didn't know, but something that might be actually useful in promoting your content, in promoting your services. Um, I don't know, for example, a big you, you might find a big show happening in one month in your area where you operate and you can prepare a marketing campaign connected to the show saying, Hey guys, like we can provide you with like transportation services so that you can get wherever you want quickly. This is something that 
helps to understand what people are talking about right now. It's very, very uh, useful, I do believe. Um, then it's Statista. Statista is one of my favorite tools for general market research. Uh, it helps you to understand the potential market size, uh, who are competitors in your market. It does not have it for all locations, unfortunately, but for some it does have trends happening in the market. So basically, if you need, for example, you're looking for um, some funding and you're looking for investors for a business and they usually require having a business plan. And in this business plan, you need to understand the potential market size. You might go to Statista and you might check numbers there because Statista usually have uh, has it. And in general, it's good to understand how big your market is, how much money it has, and whether it's growing, whether it's not growing, what are the trends in the market, for you to also understand what you should do with your business and your promotion as well. And here is the tool also that is called Data Report Portal, and basically shows all the di uh, different digital trends in different countries, social media usage, and I do believe it's very useful because it helps to make decisions on which acquisition channels you need to focus on, whether you need to focus on Facebook or you need to do a campaign on Instagram or Snapchat, whatever people in your area use, you want to be there. So I do believe this is a very useful tool to do such a research as well. And I do believe that it might also help you to understand the size of your market as well, because yeah, well, people use uh, social media a lot nowadays and yeah, um, just by the number of users for the biggest social media in your region, you can just approximately understand how big, how many users are there for you. Um, then what do we have? And this was, the tools for research. And the next section we have is tools for analytics. And of course, here I'd like to start with my hub. Obviously, this is something that we do provide. And here you can get all the company operation information, number of orders, revenue, driver response time. There are many different things that you can understand with my hub. It does have lots of different reports. So if you are our partner, obviously, my help is the tool for you to use. Apart from that, as I mentioned, we also use Google Analytics. Here you can get some information about your mobile apps users, their demographics, where they're coming from, how they use their apps. Do you have more women using your app or more men using your app? What their interests are? Also, our interests are not for every location, uh, but for most of the locations, they do provide interest. So, for example, if you see that your users are interested in shopping, you know that you can find your potential uh, audience at shopping malls and you need to be there. So, just basically everything. And also, uh, once you create a website, I do highly recommend you to connect your website with Google Analytics because it will also help you understand the audience of your website and maybe how you need to improve your website to uh, keep this audience. Then what else? Apps Flyer. Um, again, I mentioned that it is a paid tool, uh, but you know, if you are serious about your business, if you are serious about growing your business, I do strongly believe that it's good to use AppsFlyer because it does provide more precise information about user acquisition in different channels and user activity in apps. If you launch different campaigns in different channels, it's really good to have it, uh, to have AppsFlyer because it will show you all this information, like how many users um, booked a ride with you how many of them came from Facebook ads, how many of them came from you know, Google ads. So you can see all this information with Apps Flyer. And of course, of course, Google Analytics does show it as well, but with Apps Flyer, it's just more precise. 
more precise. And personally, I do think that AppsFlyer is just easier to use than Google Analytics. Uh, then also uh, information about installs, reinstalls, search impressions, user acquisition can be found in your accounts in Google Play and App Store. You should have access to those and you should be able to see how many like how your apps are doing in terms of uh, installs. Then also when it comes to other tools for analytics, uh, you can use Adjust. Again, just like Apps Flyer, it does provide more precise information about user acquisition and user activity in apps. I did not mention it instead of Apps Flyer because with Apps Flyer, Ondi has an integration. So we have an SDK uh, of Apps Flyer and it's really easy to connect your applications to Apps Flyer for us. With Adjust, we don't have it, but if you don't use the Ondi platform, Adjust is your choice, might be your choice as well. Um, then it's about Hotjar. And this tool provides with website analytics, including hot maps. Uh, what does it mean? So basically, when you go to the website or some or your user goes to your website and they just scroll, they look for different information, they spend certain time at the first screen, then they go down, 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 down. And what Hotjar does is basically record the activity of users on your website and show where they click, which button they click, where they spend more time reviewing your information, you know, whether they went to the very end of the page, like what they pay attention to. So this is quite an important information in my opinion. And as far as I remember, Hotjar still has their free plan it's limited in terms of the number of views and uh, the amount of information that you can get, but it's still quite good. And you can still, when you just start your business, you might want to use it to see how users perceive your website. And also it does provide an option to collect user feedback. I don't know, for example, the user spent some time on your website and you want to ask them, I don't know, um, did they find what they were looking for? And you might create this small kind of questionnaire on your website and the users will be able to answer these questions and you will get some additional information. It's also available in the free version, but of course with some, with some paid plans, you will just have more options and more tools to access. Uh, then uh, when it comes to other tools for analytics, Last hog. In general, I probably I wouldn't say that's such a great tool for um for your case for a ride hailing company, but when it comes to analytics on the website performance, it's not bad. Okay, it's 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 quite good. And again, if we compare it with Google Analytics, I do prefer post hog. And uh, also you can um uh, it, it has a free version as well. And I do believe when you start your business, the free version is more than enough for you with post hoc specifically. Then you also have Google Search Console and this console is specifically for your website. It gives you information about your search traffic, uh, which keywords people are using to find your website. And this is very useful because, for example, if you promote your taxi services in, I don't know, like Egypt, and people are coming uh, and to your website because they were looking for, I don't know, like delivery in um, somewhere in Asia, this is not something that you want. That means that something is wrong with your website and something is wrong with your text and you need to change it. It also helps you to understand whether your website is doing well in general, whether it's healthy, maybe some pages, um, they just, um, they have some errors um, and you need to fix that because it does influence on the overall performance of your website and it does influence on how easily your potential audience can find your website. So this is also something to keep in mind. So it's a good tool for uh, website in general. Then what do we have? 
And the last thing in tools for analytics, Google Tag Manager. Also for your website, uh, it will help you to connect different analytics tools and just forget about heading pieces of codes to your website. So for example, you need to install Google Analytics uh, and you need to install Facebook Analytics to your website and you need to install, I don't know, Twitter um, Analytics to your website because you plan to do promotion or something like that. Use Google Tech Manager. It will simplify your life so, so much because what you would need is basically install this code once on your website and then all the different pieces of other analytical sources that you want to use. You don't need to ask your programmer to do that. You do it yourself in Google Tag Manager. You just, it's really simple and I do really recommend you doing this. But again, I don't know if you really need it when you start, but just in case, you know, just for you to keep in mind, I do believe that's a very useful tool. Marketing tools, and just one moment, I need to take a quick break. Okay, so when it comes to marketing tools, and here we have a subsection which is connected to direct messaging, I have a number of different tools that you might want to use with for, for your emails, for example, or some messages for your users, some SMS messages. Here, my personal preference is Brava. We're using Brava. Uh, I like uh, it's. I like Brava. It's an easy to use. It's very simple tool. Uh, I do believe. I don't really remember, but they should have some free options, I believe, so you can send a limited amount of emails um, to your users. It does also provide with some marketing automation that you might want to use. Same goes for MailChimp. MailChimp is basically competitive to Brava, also marketing automation and email marketing. Same goes to GetResponse and same goes to Zoho campaigns. Um, Zoho in general is quite a big platform. They do have their own CRM system and it's probably not something that you really need because you don't really need it for uh, a right hailing company, but you know, they, they're, campaigns are not bad. I would say I also used uh, Zoho campaigns in the past and it's not bad. I can recommend it as well. Uh, then when it comes to other marketing tools and something that you might want to use for your push and in-app notifications for your mobile applications, we use Firebase. Firebase is something that we have for all our mobile apps. So every partner gets Firebase and access to Firebase. And there you can send your push and in-app notifications. It's free of charge. You don't need to pay anything for this. But there are other options. I had to add something else just for you to know that there are alternatives. And if you use another system or if you are building your own rate hailing app, you might use one of those like one signal, push whoosh, clever tab, push bots. Have I ever used any of those, if I'm being honest? But I just checked. It looks like they are one of the leaders of the markets on the market. So you can try those ones as well. But again, if you are with Onti, Firebase is your option. And we actually had a webinar about Firebase some time ago. So yeah, if you're interested, just let me know and we'll send you the link to, to this one as well. But um, again, some other tools that you might need apart from push notifications and in-app messages is a tool for service because I do strongly believe that you need to keep in touch with your users, with your audience as much as possible and you need to talk to them and you need to have this conversation. You need to get as much information from them as possible. And here I just mentioned a couple of tools that you can use for your service, basically preparing questionnaires and sending them to your users, asking questions, whether they're happy with your service, what they liked, what they didn't like. From all those tools, I did use SurveyMonkey. It's one of the most popular ones, I believe. Very easy to use. But I don't, I wouldn't say it's like super cheap. It's not that cheap, but if you want to launch a marketing campaign once in a while, 
it's not that bad. I do believe that it's okay to afford this tool. Uh, then it's Qualtrics as one of the competitors. Then you have Typeform as well. Typeform, we also use Typeform. And uh, it's also quite an easy to use tool. And then if you don't want to pay anything at all, I do always believe that you can use just Google Forms. The simplest and the cheapest is basically free version that you can use. And it's, yeah, it's very convenient. You still can do and ask lots of different questions with Google Forms. So try and find something that is uh, going to work for you. But I do believe that surveys are really important. Okay, marketing tools over design tools. What can we do with design? If you are at your start, you don't have a designer, your team is not big. It's just you and a couple of other people uh, without any design background. I strongly recommend you to go with Canva. Canva is a very popular tool. I'm pretty sure that you might have heard about Canva somewhere because you can do with Canva anything. You can create presentations. You can create graphics for your social media. Anything that you need. And with free version of Canva, you have quite a lot of features to use, like all the different fonts that you might need, all the different like um, editing features that you might need, Canva provides it. <clears throat> Personally, I do believe that you might want to use a paid version and it's like the, the cheapest plan is something like $13, $20, $13, something like that per month, depending on the country, I believe, I don't know. But uh, it does give you access to everything, to all the features, all the different features, including AI features, including all the different plugins, uh, AI generation of um, new images. And uh, like it's just, it's very convenient. If you are not a designer, I do believe that Canva is just the best option. However, I could not skip Figma because Figma is basically, you can create anything connected to design with Figma. And uh, personally, I worked with Figma as well, despite the fact I'm not a designer, but sometimes it was easier for me to use it. But if you have a design in your team like Figma, of course, just go for it and, and use it as well. It's a, it's a good tool. What else in terms of design? Which other tools for design can you use? Mid Journey, uh, it can be used for AI generated images. So you can try with Mid Journey, also a very popular tool. Um, I do believe in when it comes to design, it's just as popular as ChatGPT. But also, oh, okay, like here I see Figma. Sorry, this is a mistake because it's not Figma. It's the Microsoft Designer. And here's the link is the right one, but the name is not the right one. Microsoft Designer. It does also provide with an option of AI generated images and you can use it for anything connected to design. And it's a free tool. You can access and you can use it for free. I have a feeling they wanted to create something like a competitor to um, Canva. So you can try both. You can try Canva, you can try designer Microsoft.com, uh, Microsoft designer basically, and see what's gonna work best for you. But yeah, in, in terms of AI generated images and uh, design in general, you can use this one as well. And in the presentation that all of you will get after this session, you I will just improve it. I will fix this small thing. But yeah, you will have all the links and you will be able to just click on these tools and go straight to the websites. Um, then, uh, because of course, design is very connected to video uh, content. I mentioned two tools. Uh, personally, I use CapCut, uh, which is a great tool for video content for your social media. And if you are starting a business, I do believe that you need to go to social media because this is provides you enormous opportunities for your promotion absolutely free of charge. CapCut has 
a um, desktop version, basically something you can install on your computer. And it also has a mobile app version. So whatever you prefer, it's it has a free plan. And I would say that a number of features that they do provide with a free plan, it, it's great, really. It's really great. And I would highly recommend it. But also like if you like to have a paid version, that's that's really great. I I really like CapCut. I use it a lot for my content. And um, I highly recommend you this tool. And then uh, I wasn't paying, by the way, for a CapCut, <laughs> unfortunately. Maybe fortunately. But anyway, uh, another tool, AI-generated videos, Sora. Everyone, not everyone maybe, but yeah, it's the tool uh, like me journey for videos. So something that you might want to use, uh, play a bit. I do believe it takes quite some time to understand how to use AI tools for video creation, but you can use it as well for your content. And video content, again, social media, Nowadays is all about video content, and that's how you can use these tools. And the last but not the least section that I want to um, mention, of course, it's some tools that might be just useful for your business as well. And here is Perplexity AI. It's an AI tool which provides you with basic research on different topics. It helps you to quickly find information it does have a free version. It does have a premium version as well, but a free version, they do have it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good one. I use it from time to time when I just need to get answers to my question. I, I don't want to go to Google. Um, I just have a very general question. I'd rather go to Perplexity and I'd rather use this website instead of ChatGPT because I do believe it has less hallucinations than ChatGPT, and it gives you links to the sources of information. So basically, when it gives you the answer, you can see where it took the information from. And you might skip some old sources, for example, and just pay attention only to new ones. But yeah, uh, that's the tool that I believe might be very useful for your research, for example, when you do your market research, it might be very useful. Or I don't know when you're looking for when you when you're trying to understand your users better or your audience better or people like in the area of your operation better. I do believe that this tool might also help you. You might just ask, OK, like um, which transportation services people in this area need? And it will give you the answer from some sources. And then um, another tool that I want to mention here is Jasper AI. How can you use it? Basically for AI copywriting. Again, getting back to the topic of social media and getting back to the topic of content creation, I do believe it's a great tool for creating some copies, creating some content for your website, for your blog, if you want to do this or for some social media posts. I, I'm, I'm not really sure that you need it so much, but I decided to include it just in case maybe you might need it. So yeah, Jasper, I feel free to use it. I do believe it's it's better than ChatGPT. It might provide you um, a better content than ChatGPT. And I did not mention ChatGPT here because I do believe everyone knows it. If you don't know, I hope you will learn about this tool now. But yeah, uh, this is it. When it comes to all the different tools that I wanted to share with you. But let's go to questions. I see some, uh, let me go to this section first. I'm going to start with the Q&A section right now. Uh, let me just probably stop sharing and I will get back to you. How we use Firebase from our apps. So basically, basically, how do you use Firebase? Uh, Fire, you just need to go to your Firebase console 
And let me just quickly, I'm going to send you the link to Firebase. Um, and you just, I'm going to send it in the chat, just one moment. So you go to this website, which is firebase.google.com, and you click go to console, but you need to make sure that the account that you are using with this tool is the account of, that is connected to Ondi platform, because that's where you will get your access to. So just please make sure that this is the right account. And then you just click uh, in the upper right corner, go to console, and you will get to your Firebase console and you can start working with it. Uh, you, you choose your project, obviously, and you find their uh, push notifications or in-app messages, whatever you need. Um, again, we have on our YouTube channel, we do have a webinar about Firebase. Then let's go to, yes, the links would be great. Of course, the links will be included in the presentation so you will be able to use it. How about Copilot? I will be honest with you. I did not use Copilot, okay? But if you like Copilot, feel free to use it. I think like it's like any AI tool, it's a good one for its, um, for whatever, things you can do with it. Just, yeah, I, I I personally believe whatever tool you can use. I have my concerns about, you know, all these different AI tools that are so many on the market right now. I don't use them, uh, all of them, um, only for specific tasks, but whatever you can find, if it's gonna work for you, why not? What tools can I use for generating attention, capturing captions? Mm, 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 mm. when it comes to so basically captions is about the scenario that you create for your content right for your video content and um first of all you need to obviously work on the scenario it's something that you can use ChatGPT to start with personally i always whatever text ChatGPT generates for me i always add something on my own <laughs> Um, so I always change it, even if I use it, I rarely use it for content generation, but still, but, um, if your content is already ready and you have your, um, video already, just use CapCut. It does generate auto captions based on what you said in the video. You can choose all the different styles. There are so many of different styles for these captions. I really love it. So. Try a CapCut and you will definitely get captions you're looking for. Um, in terms of, can I get some information for on the light system? Um, I don't know, it depends on what you're looking for. If you have any specific question, maybe I can ask, uh, maybe you can answer these questions right now. But in general, I do believe that you can send your questions about on the light to marketing on the app and this is like i just shared with you the email address that you can use okay you can start like yeah just uh if you are looking for on delight uh, and you want to start with on delight uh, i'm gonna send the link right now uh, all you need to do is just to go to this page and just click on the button launch on delight and that's how you get to your demo version and then in the demo version you can launch your on delight services um okay the next thing the next question tell me about the clientele platform where can i find it and also uh can send it to clients to book rides okay i'm trying to mm -mm -mm and send it to clients to book rides. Uh, so if you're launching your ride hailing platform with us, it's either you're using on the platform, which is a paid version with um, lots of nice features and um, it's a white label platform, 
where you are using on delight or which I just sent the link in the chat. And that's how you get all the different apps. And that's how you get your, with on delight, you don't get a customer app with only you have a separate customer app that you can provide to your, uh, to your clients. And with on delight, you have a web application that you can also provide to your on the, to your clients. Um, and, um, yeah, that's that's how you do it. I'm going to just share with you in the chat the link to our website. So if you are just about to launch your uh, right healing service, but you haven't chosen the platform to do it with, you can just try on D and you can just basically click on the button, try for free on the website and you need to sign up for the platform and our manager will get in touch with you and they will tell you everything about the customer app, the web application that you can use for your clients as well. So that's that's how it works with Ondi. Um, okay. The next question from Bernard, uh, what app is preferred for content planning? Honestly, I did not find anything for myself. Like personally, when it comes to my like personal uh, thing that I do, I use Notion. It does have like, and actually I should have mentioned Notion probably as well to you guys. Um, what you need to, they do have different um, spaces Spaces. They you can create different pages in Notion. I'm gonna send it here. Also in the chat, link is in the chat, and you can create a, a simple like uh, Kanban board with different like um, columns. The first column can be which content you need to to do. You plan to do like with some specific pieces of content, like video about this or like a post on Facebook about that. Then the next column can be like, I don't know, in, in progress, which means that on this content, this is the content that you're working on at the moment. And you can add a column that is done. Um, also, like you can also use some calendars, uh, Canva. I know that Canva has the calendar, the specific calendar for uh, content scheduling, but I, I will be honest with you. I haven't found anything for myself. I just, I just go with the flow or I use Notion. Um, there is also another tool that I know for, if you are really into uh, social media marketing, I know this tool, I'm going to send the link also. Uh, uh, yes, Hootsuite. Also, the link is in the chat. It's a very popular one. I, I think everybody, like, heard, not everybody, but those who are engaged with social media heard about this tool. This is the tool you can use for your social media planning. So, ah, it's very difficult to, to me. <laughs> To recommend anything in that sense uh, but i hope that you will find something how long uh, the trial is for the trial for on day and i believe for on delight as well is two weeks uh, basically 14 days that's how much time you have for for the trial so yeah Anything else, any other questions that you might have about different tools connected to marketing, connected to business, whatever, I'll be happy to help you and to answer. I'm gonna give it another couple of minutes. Maybe you come up with some other questions and yeah, I'll be happy to recommend you something. But if there are no other questions, I believe we would call it a day. And uh, yeah, the presentation 
the recording of this session will be sent to all of you, I believe this week, and you will get it soon and you will get all the links soon. Is there a feature that allows the client to sign after the ride is finished? Um, I don't think so. I think that the user needs to sign up first and then, then has a ride. That's how it works. Yes, okay, the webinar, uh, the uh, Firebase webinar, I'm gonna send it here. I will send it here, just one moment, please. I will send it right in the chat. Okay, uh, just one moment, please. I will, will I need to find it. I need to find it in our YouTube channel. And here it is. So the link to our Firebase webinar was sent. And I do believe that this was the last question probably. And we can call it a day. But anyway, like as always if you have any questions about the tools if you are with us if you are the on d partner we will of course um we will of course please feel free to reach out to your account managers with questions or just access to marketing you know on the app and we will be happy to help you it's it's not a big deal for us. Um, another question from Calvin, is there any seminars for marketing strategies? Uh, thank you for asking, because we might want to come up with something. Mm, marketing strategies, I'm just gonna add this to, to our plan. Uh, also on our YouTube channel, you might find, let me just quickly check them for you. Because obviously we did something for for marketing for marketing. Let me quickly take a look. Yeah. Oh, actually, actually, we did a webinar about marketing, like uh, kind of cheap marketing, marketing for zero. That's what we called it. Uh, also, the link is sent to to the chat. It's about different marketing strategies that you can use that will not cost you a lot to implement that will be very cheap and uh, in most cases free of charge. So this is something that you might want to take a look at, but I think we haven't done like other marketing webinars, like basic marketing webinars for quite some time. So we might want to, uh, to have something uh, the last question and um, from Victor, how do I make my website to appear at the first page in Google search engine? Oh, <laughs> that's such a tough question. We need to, <laughs> I do believe that we need to have a webinar about this topic. And actually I'm just gonna really uh, do that. I will add this uh, to, to the list. There are lots of things you need to do to appear on the first page on Google search engine, and you need to understand the keywords you want to use to, because it depends on the competition in your area. It depends on the competition for the keywords that you're going to use. Um, it takes, it's gonna take you a lot of time to create the right content for your website. It's gonna take you time to, um, create 
to to have links on other websites to your website so that's that's a lot of work but this is a good idea to have a separate webinar about search engine optimization and we might have it soon so thank you for the idea uh, because it's very difficult for me to answer this question quickly right now it's better to do it separately which we will do and yeah i guess we can call it a day thank you so much guys for being today with me on this webinar i really appreciate all the questions and just your time that you spent today with me i wish you a great day i hope that was useful and as i said all the materials will be sent to you soon have a good day and yeah see you soon on other webinars thank you so much bye